Are there any questions? I'm retiring. You know, I, I felt I, I spoke to Sean and Mickey last year about retiring and um, they both felt like I had more time and and uh, in spite of my family's arguments at times, uh, I felt like it was time and uh, I think this one was fairly clear. Um, it was harder than I thought. I thought it would be I'm done and it's over and it's easy. Um, it's a huge part of my life that's that's going away, um, and that made it difficult, but I think it's undoubtedly the right decision. Um, one of the things that I kept thinking about last year was there was no real clear replacement on the roster, and I knew if I was at home watching TV and Drew was getting hit and I felt like I could have helped, I wouldn't have been able to live with myself, and it's much easier knowing that there's someone there that's going to play at a high level for him. So um, this is all Ryan Ramchek's fault. <laughs> Zach, when you look at um, the future, are you going to get into coaching or you know, be a part of the media or what exactly? I told uh, Diane the other day I was going to take your job. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no <l> listen. <laughs> listen, uh, obviously, um, you know, I, I've, I've been a part of, a, of starting a company in New Orleans. Um, I'm going to be heavily involved in that uh, for the time being. And, um, you know, as a player, you, you over the course of your career, you hear a lot of people say things like, well, come and talk to me when you're done. And yet you have no idea if any of those people are serious or if any of those things are actual jobs or uh, if it's just talk. So we're, we're fortunate. We're going to spend some time and, and kind of see what is available. And, um, I'll make a decision on, on what's available to me, and uh, I'm in a very fortunate position that I can kind of sit and wait and see what, what I enjoy. Coach, what was your reaction when Zach told you he was contemplating this move? Um, probably a lot like Mickey and or the rest of the teammates. You, you know, I reflect there's a handful of people that have been here together for the whole time, and you know, a year and a half or so ago, there was a group of 10 of us that were still 10 after 10, I guess it was, and we had a dinner before the start of training camp and really reflected on how we all ended up here. It, you know, because, you know, so that it was still clear. And, and to this day, I can remember exactly, you know, Zach talks about Randy Walker, who he played for at Northwestern, who I coached for at Miami uh, University in, in Ohio. That's where I met Dan Dalrymple. And so Randy, um, who passed on uh, after Zach finished, Randy was one of those guys that just, it was very hard to get him to like really give you strong opinions about somebody. It was just, you know, he was a tough judge, but yet if he ever did have a strong opinion, you'd listen. And I called Randy to get some feedback on Brett Bassanays, who was a quarterback at Northwestern, along with Zach at the same time. And we spoke briefly about that, and then he asked me about Zach, you know, his right tackle, his captain, and and he he just went on and on about him. And and I remember when we hung up the phone, just going over to the board, trying to you know figure out where the magnet was, and you know, it wasn't it wasn't on the board. <laughs> it was on the <laughs> second board. They drew it. <laughs> he wrote it down. No, he, he had a magnet. It was on the, it was on the backboard. Yeah. It's a true story. And and just pull you know you're. When you get to that portion of the draft, you're, you're looking for conviction and traits and certain things, measurables, and you started looking at and he's you know, two-time captain. Um, Randy loved him. Um, Randy had just coached a, a, an offensive lineman that had gone and gotten drafted earlier. And so, honestly, uh, those words from Randy had as much to do, I think, with us really uh, looking closely because I can't think of two or three times when Randy spoke that way of any, any one player. And, and so that's what goes through my mind is, is just, it seems like maybe six years, you know, he reported eligible, it seems like for a couple of years and then he became our right tackle. And it doesn't seem like as long as it's been. Zach, was there ever a time that you 
thought there was a chance he might end up signing with another team? No. It's never, never once. I remember yeah, there's really only been one contract I signed here where there was like any other interest. And I remember having a conversation with my agent saying, just say as much as you can about that other team so we can get this That's done quickly. That's not what I told you. As, as, as honest, as, as honest and, and, uh, and uh, straightforward as Mickey's been with me, I might have not been the same with him. But I wanted to stay probably more than Mickey wanted me to stay. So uh, no, there, I, I think, First of all, I think as soon as I realized that I was not ever leaving New Orleans, I was going to live here forever, um, the opportunity to stay and be in one team and then live in that city uh, was – there's there's no way – there's no amount of money that a team could have paid that would have outweighed that, that – uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That, you know, that, that would have outweighed that. It was important to me early, and, and it was super important. Randy told Sean I'd play for him for 10 years, and that was very important to me. I remember negotiating the last contract, how important it was that it looked like I would make it to 10 years and, and make him right. So, sorry. I will tell one story. This is making me feel a little bit better about that. I was sitting in the coach's uh, meeting room a couple years ago. It was before the draft, and they, they saw it. I don't know if they still do it, but there's six categories of players. It's basically like these like elite guys that you know come every few years all the way down to like maybe this guy could possibly have a chance of playing and I'm looking at him and I see there's five up there and I'm reading them and I'm like I don't know after talking to Mickey I don't know which one of those they would have put me in I don't think he'd put me in any of those categories and right when I'm thinking it Mickey walks into the room and I said Mickey I can't identify which one of those categories I would have fit in. And he looks at the board and goes, oh. And he closes the door. And the sixth category was behind it. And he said, that was your category. So that's a good story. That I <laughs> so I don't feel as bad, because that was so disrespectful. <laughs> Although I agreed with it, so. Yeah. My, it, it, the relationships that I have with, first of all, you know, I was not like a guy that every team in the NFL was chasing after coming out of college, right? I didn't schedule any private workouts and I, I did not, I mean, I'm not good at 40s or verticals or any of those things. And this was the place that gave me an opportunity. And I think from day one, I felt very obligated to um, to hold up my end of that. And I've, I've felt indebted to these two for a long time. And uh, once I was here and, and built relationships, it's funny, obviously free agency is starting soon. And these guys look at teams and they, they make decisions on where they're going to go. And there's all these discussions about it's all contract talk, right? I can't tell you how many players have come into this building from other places and a month in said, you guys don't know how good you have it. It's not like this everywhere. It's the single greatest advertising that you could ever give to a free agent. This is a special place. They care about you. They treat you like men. Um, it, it was very easy for me to feel like I owed them something every year. Um, and, you know, I, I just – Obviously, a lot goes into someone playing in a place as long as I've gotten to. Um, the situation has to be right. I came in with a new coach. You know, if, if Sean was here for seven years, I probably would have played here for seven years. It's just the nature of this business sometimes. And so, obviously, the situation was right. But my, my desire to stay had as much to do with uh, my, my being as comfortable as I am in New Orleans, loving the city so much and the people in it, and then feeling this – kind of constant urge to prove myself to make them feel like they made a good decision. How would you say your experience has instructed the other young players in terms of where you were drafted, how long you had to wait for development as a starter, or how long that took, and also just the situation you came into when you coached, you coached here before, too, that's kind of unseen? 
Well, I mean, so there's, again, there's so many things that play into me staying here as long as I've gotten to. One is coming into an organization with a new coach and a new group of people. Um, a huge one and maybe as big as any was coming in and playing behind a player that was constantly trying to help me. Uh, John Stinchcomb has meant as much to my career as any player uh, ever could have. And it's, you know, John trained me to replace him. He made comments every single day about how he was, how my foot was on his back. And, you know, you're just trying to push me out the door. And, you know, I've given you all this stuff and this is how you repay me. Uh, <laughs> but at the end of the day, and it, I mean, he's joking, it's true. I mean, you're, you're training your replacement when you help a younger player. But, you know, John was selfless in that, and, and he taught me and gave me more, um, you know, than I ever could ask for and, and gave me time to develop as a player. I was not ready to start my first year. Um, if I had, I probably wouldn't have lasted very long. But I was given an opportunity to play a little bit and to play a role and to get on the field and get experience without exposing all of my <laughs> numerous weaknesses, and, um, and it gave me time to develop. And, and so... I think that's the biggest reason why I've always felt such a, um, I've, I've always felt that it was important to do the same to the guy behind me, kind of pay it forward and, and try to be a mentor. And because there's guys that come in this league and there's so much talent and ability there and it takes a while to unravel it. And sometimes this, you know, this business is not patient. And I'm one of the very few that was, was given patience um, and and uh, the ability to give back some of that to, to younger players is very important to me um, because it's probably the reason why I got to stick around.